failed, Chris. I can't locate the white collective unconscious. Uh, I wouldn't feel too bad about that. You know, Western culture hasn't really carried the baton on folklore and mythology. The rise of Christianity put the kibosh on that. And then gospel hits the number one bestseller list and everything else gets remaindered. These stories are interesting in some anthropological context, I guess, but mostly they seem to apply to high school students. Hmm. There's often some mishap involving a rodent or something from the arachnid family. And the victim of this misadventure invariably reacts negatively. Goes ballistic, freaks out, has a hairy fit, culminating in either insanity or litigation. Yeah, not much you can use there, huh? I simply can't find any healing properties in these fables. White people don't seem concerned at all with using mythology to heal themselves. In fact, they seem intent on making each other feel worse. So I'm abandoning the project. Hey, Leonard, I don't think you gotta do that. I mean... You know, there's got to be something to be learned from this. Maybe, maybe it's just indicative of how threatened we feel in the wake of the Industrial Revolution. Well, how is that? Well, you know, it's just not the clockmaker and the clock anymore. I mean, everything's rolled off the assembly line, you know. We, we feel rattled by the anonymity of our possessions, you know. Hey, where'd that come from? Who's this guy? Who can I trust? I mean, mass production gave rise to capitalism, but it undermined the individual, which in turn killed God. And we, as a society, have filled that vacuum with fear and paranoia. How does the rise of capitalism explain the one about the young woman in the Volkswagen?